Okay, all you freshmen. It's your lucky day. Usually you'd be spending your freshman summer to get your asses busted and running for your worthless little lives. But this year, because we feel so sorry for you, we're gonna take it easy on you and save us all a lot of time. So if you meet here, right here, after school today, you only get one lick from each of us. But you run like cowards. Well, it's open season all summer long, boys. Oh yeah, Mitch Kramer? Mitchie, 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 Mitchie. <laughs> we're looking for you, pal. Your ass will be perfect for the day is over. Have a nice afternoon. <laughs> you better get out of town. Go spend the summer with your grandparents or something. Hey, man. You are going to show up to our game tonight, aren't you? Yeah, I'm pitching. I kind of have to. How should we inscribe your tombstone? <laughs> How about Ben over? <laughs> yeah, right. Why aren't they after anybody else? They are, man. Believe me. I know, man. And with that, the summer of 1976 begins for incoming freshmen and class of 1977 seniors in a Texas town. This week's film documents their last day of school and first day of summer. The choices they face, the doldrums they deal with, and the turning points in their lives that they do not realize are happening. As the film title states, they are merely dazed and confused. Directed by Richard Linklater in his first major studio effort, this 1993 film, as I mentioned, harkens back to the last day of school in a Texas town in 1976. During this day, Incoming freshman boys are paddled by that year's seniors. The freshman girls are subject to, an, to a humiliating and admittedly somewhat comedic hazing process. And the seniors themselves address issues and choices they are faced with. This film is best remembered for being the launching pad of a who's who of Hollywood stars. Notably, Matthew McConaughey, in his first major role, is Wooderson, an area city worker that is a friend of the area high schoolers because he loves to party. Also a part of the cast are Mila Jovovich, Ben Affleck, Adam Goldberg, Parker Posey, and Nikki Cat, among others that people may recognize. In our first two scenes, we look at the hazing the first scene, two freshmen are hunted down by current senior Fred O'Banion, played by Affleck, who flunked just to take part in the hazing ritual for a second consecutive year. And the girls, with pacifiers in their mouths, are being forced to air raid by Parker Posey by hitting the ground on hot pavement with pacifiers in their mouths. Then the degradation continues, with the freshman girls having flour, ketchup, mustard, and eggs poured on them while on the pavement. Nice try, freshman. Tell you what, just for being such brave little kids, I'm only going to give each of you five licks, okay? <laughs> All right, grab a pole then, kid. Let's get going. I don't think so, creep. Mom! Carl, get in the house. Get in the house! And you, get the hell off my property. Oh, well, I'm sorry, ma'am. I was just uh, escorting your fine young son home from school. There's, There are some ruffians about, and I... Oh, and uh, Mitch, Carl, we'll be seeing each other again. <laughs> oh, that's it. I saw that. You two are dead. You hear me? You're dead. Go! Excuse me. Thank you. <laughs> fascinating is the way not only the school but the entire community seems to be supporting this you know or at least turn their heads i mean they apparently have permission to use the parking lot right no parents seem to mind you know there's some concessions you know i mean <laughs> I know. and the hazing continues 
The seniors, we tried. We, we, we gave you all a chance. But since you little teases can't follow instructions, we're just going to have to try something else, won't we? Seniors, you love us. Smile. You love us. Welcome to high school, honey. Propose to Mr. Dawson. Idiot. Will you marry me? Don't know. What's in it for me? Anything you want. Anything? Anything. Go like this. <laughs> Whatever you like. <laughs> Whatever I like, I would definitely marry you. It's so degrading. Yeah. You're an asshole. Yes, I am. It's <laughs> terrible, man. Horrible. Oh, Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> I just want you guys to know I feel for you now. I did it when I was a freshman, and you'll do it when you're a senior. But you're doing good. Now fry like bacon, you little freshman piggies! Fry! Fry! Hi. Hi. Oh, hello there. I would like for you to propose to Tony. Oh, God. <laughs> On your knees. All right, get up. <laughs> Will you marry me? <laughs> what am I supposed to say here? I, I don't know. Um, what do you do for me, huh? Um, anything you want. Imagine the possibilities. Oh, Jesus. No, seriously, you can stand up. I mean, um, what's your name? Sabrina. I'm Tony. Hi. Anthony, actually. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, <laughs> this is Mike. Hey. We were um, just discussing the utter stupidity of these initiation rituals, and we were, we were kind of wondering why someone like you would subject yourself to the losing end of it all. What are we having? Social hour over here? It's supposed to be. A major plot element in this film is that of Randall Pink Floyd, played by Jason London. He is the starting quarterback of his high school team and will return as a senior. His coaches want him to sign a pledge to refrain from drugs, alcohol, and sex throughout the summer in preparation of the upcoming season. This is a familiar plot element in any coming-of-age story. A young person is faced with a major decision that they feel infringes on their right to choose. Next, we will hear the coaches get on Floyd and his buddies about staying focused during the summer. And then we will hear how Floyd handles this with his final decision. Hey, coach. So tell me, any girls going to be ready to play some football this fall, huh? Oh, yeah. I don't know, coach. You know, uh, I've been doing so good in English classes, you know. I... I figured I'd take next fall off and become a writer. What do you think yeah. about that, huh? <laughs> Boy, you wouldn't know how to write your name if it wasn't stenciled on your locker. <laughs> no, seriously, everybody. Now, don't go getting soft on me this summer. You know, you're sitting around the pool all day. Break down! <laughs> Hell, man. My grandmother's quicker and tougher than you pansies. Of course, she's 6'3", 250. Jesus. Four, five, 40. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what's the matter with you, Floyd? What quarterbacks don't have to do with their coaches say is that it? Dawson, did you give him that pledge sheet? Huh? The pledge sheet. Did you give it to him? Yeah, come on, just right here. Well, Randy, if you could get that back to us by the end of the day, we'd feel a lot better about it. And you guys see that he does this, okay? okay no All right, coach. Okay. Randy Floyd, before next fall, you're in need of a serious attitude adjustment, young man. You better get your priorities straight. And watch out with that other crowd you're running with. Don't think I haven't noticed. Hey! Uh -oh, I want that piece of paper on my desk before you leave here today. Do you hear me? Attitude adjustment. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Right. Oh, already the straight, bad, buddy. Runs with a bad crowd. <laughs> bad people. <laughs> Watch yourself. Yeah, well, I've got coaches and everybody else's attitude adjusted priorities right here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And now, Floyd's final decision. Morning, coach. So what the hell's going on? Why am I getting wake-up calls from the cops? Oh, there was nothing. They just left just now. False alarm, coach. Come here, Randy. Come here. You've been out with those losers all night? Hey, Coach Conrad. Remember me? Second period, gym class? That's the kind of people I was telling you about. Trouble like this means nothing to that bunch of clowns. You're the one with something to lose. <laughs> now, Coach, you don't even know them. Randy. How can you even pretend to talk that way, huh? Okay, Randy. I shouldn't do this, but I'm willing to wipe the slate clean and forget about all of this. I want you to finally get your priorities straightened out, quit hanging out with that bunch of hoodlums, and sign your commitment to your team. Have you done that yet? I'm still thinking about it. No one's paying you to think about it. Just do it, son! You know, Coach, I gotta get going. Me and my loser friends, you know, we got to go get Aerosmith tickets. Top priority of the summer. Oh, uh, Coach, uh, I forgot. I might play ball. But I will never sign that. Much like the last film that was reviewed, The Graduate, this film has a superb soundtrack. It is an eclectic mix of 60s and 70s rock that really adds an element that drives the film into the viewer's consciousness. This film, to me, ranks as one of the best coming-of-age story. With excellent dialogue, characters that blend together so well, and have a likability to them that cannot be explained, this film is simply a must-see. Popular culture analyst Chuck Klosterman said about this film, it is not about what occurred, it is about what is remembered. This is a film that is a memory of a certain time, not an empirical documentation, a time where young individuals were captivated by cruising around, hanging out in pool halls, and just being around people. A simpler time, but with the same problems and decisions we face today. Before we close though, I think the best way to explain this is to leave it to Matthew McConaughey's Wooderson character and others to tell us some timely advice. Not to indulge in any alcohol, drugs, sex after 12, or any other illegal activity. <laughs> my shadow. Spider, baby. Found that in your glove compartment, man. Hey, you know you're the third person who's given me this today? God. But what do you reckon you're going to do? So, I don't know, man. I'll probably end up signing it. I just don't want to give in so easy. Man, it's the same bullshit they tried to pull in my day. You know, if it ain't that piece of paper, some other choice they're going to try and make for you. You got to do what Randall Pink Floyd wants to do, man. Let me tell you this. The older you do get, the more rules are going to try to get you to follow. <laughs> you just got to keep living, man. L-I-V-I-N. <laughs> man, if you're gonna sign that paper, man, you should throw a little grass right in the middle, man. Roll it up, yeah. sign the joint, man. That's gonna yeah, tell him something. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'll do. Yeah. yeah, so what? Throw a bunch of ass, but you gotta think about it. We've had a lot of really good times right here, Pink. Yeah, I mean, come on, Pink. I can't believe this. You act like you're so oppressed. Then you guys are kings of the school. You get away with whatever you want. Well, look, I mean, all I'm saying is that if I ever start referring to these as the best years of my life, remind me to kill myself. Well, all I'm saying is I just want to look back and say that I did it the best I could while I was stuck in this place. Had as much fun as I could when I was stuck in this place. Played as hard as I could when I was stuck in this place. Dogged as many chicks as I could when I was stuck in this place. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good, man. <laughs> With that being said, I hope you join me next week when, in honor of Memorial Day, we will take a look at Stanley Kubrick's war masterpiece. 
paths of glory. For WMNH and Matt Connerton Unleashed, this has been a classic film review with Eric Pilcher.